What's going on guys, Corey here from Designs by FR. Today we've got a bit of a special one for you guys. Fortunately, it can't be an AMD build because we don't have any ITX AMD motherboards, but we have this special case here. It's from a company called Warmove and they're just starting up a Kickstarter. So if you guys are interested in what I'm gonna show you today, then be sure to visit the link in the video description. You can go sign up for their Kickstarter if you are interested, or just visit the website in general to find out a bit more. So the case itself is a 16.7 liter ITX case. It is two millimeter thick stainless steel. Uh, this is a prototype at the moment though. There will be some changes here and there. They're looking for feedback, hence why I'm doing this video. Now the idea with this case is that you put all of the fans as intakes. That builds up the pressure inside the case and then the air has to go through the radiator to cool the system. Now they are claiming it will be the quietest small form factor case that is out and available. So to put that to the test, we actually have to load in some awesome hardware to get that heat going. So for this, we have the ASUS RTX 3090 with the EK Water Blocks pre-installed. And then of course, we'll pair that up with the 10900K CPU. Let's get some heat into this system and see how it goes. Now guys, we really appreciate your support. One thing you could really do to help us out is to just hit that like button for us and consider subscribing if you get any value for this video. Helps us out so much. Hope you all enjoy. Today's video sponsor is U2Key.com. U2Key sell all types of game and software keys for super cheap. U2Key want to hook up our audience with a massive 32% off discount code on Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 Pro Plus. Windows 10 Pro costs $15.76, but if you use the code DBI at checkout, you can save 32% off. Not only that, but UTKey is also offering a further 20% off of all softwares using the code DBIA. So if you're not utilizing all of Windows features, get in quick and score yourself a super cheap key. I'll leave all of the links in the video description and a big thank you to UTKey for sponsoring this video. So I have absolutely no idea around uh, working around this case. I think I need to remove the radiator first so I can get access to the inside. I want to try and remove the back panel as well so I can get the GPU in. From what I saw in a few of the photos, the GPU should be one of the first things we install. And I have noticed that in here, there's actually three GPU installation uh, levels. So we can play around with those and see what best fits and we'll see what we can do here. Now the ports for the water cooling are actually on the outside and I believe that they recommend uh, removing these grommets and you can put a bulkhead fitting on the end there and then we can connect it up to the radiator port there and we have a radiator port down the bottom as well. Now this does fit SFX uh, power supplies so it shouldn't have any issues there and there is a bit of space behind the motherboard tray which we will we'll have a further look at. One thing that I'm not a fan of is the uh, rubber stops that go on the feet they keep falling off by themselves. Of course, once your PC is in place, you're probably not going to be, uh, you know, having that issue because you're not gonna be moving the case, but for now, I'm just gonna take them off. So let's figure out how to remove this radiator. I'll just start with these side, uh, side screws here. And hopefully I don't mix up the screws or anything like that, but we should be okay. Now, as I said before, this is only in prototype stages. Uh, there is a couple of scratches here and there on the case, but obviously the finish and the fitment of all the screws and everything is gonna be a lot more precise. So we got that side off. We probably have to do the top ones as well. Let's just undo them. And I assume we have to get the ones on the side as well. Now, one thing that's um, it's kind of interesting that I've been thinking when looking at this case, if I was to put a reservoir on the inside and the whole front panel is blocked off and the whole side and the top's all blocked off, how am I meant to fill the water cooling loop? So I'm thinking like, do I leave one fan off and come from the top down and try and fill up the reservoir? I don't really know. So we'll have to test that out once we get to that stage. So the whole concept of creating pressure inside the case, having all of the fans as intake is really interesting. And I get the idea behind it, like creating that pressure, obviously you have to force the air out somewhere. So it's going to go through the pockets through the radiator and disperse the heat on the outside of the case. So I'm very interested to see how it works. And that's kind of why we chose the RTX 3090 and a 10900K, because we know that's gonna heat up the loop a lot. And uh, 
you know, we'll run some benchmarks. We'll try, we'll like, we'll get this loop actually stressed in a Fermark stress test for an hour. We'll see how hot we can get it and see if this radiator is good enough or not without fans actually on it. I do wonder how much uh, cooling a big radiator like this does passively. And one thing that was interesting was uh, they wanted to kind of know how it can, how many 360 millimeter radiators this one big radiator might compare to. A bit, like just accessing the case seems to be a bit of a hassle, but I guess once you've got all your components in there and the PC's done, it's just gonna sit there anyway, so that's not really too much of an issue. I wonder if it would have been possible to maybe include some uh, soft tubes and bulkhead fittings, right? So the soft tube goes from the radiator to the bulkhead, and then it has like a swinging door so that the, the actual radiator can swing open and maybe latch close. So you've got access into the radiator. It's safe because it's still got the soft tube on there. So, you know, it's not gonna leak or anything. Plus you get easy access to the case. So that's another thought that I've had so far, just unscrewing this thing, but so far it's not too bad. Although this screw seems to be, oh, there we go. So the stainless steel is getting a lot of fingerprints on it as well. Maybe if I wore some gloves, that might be a bit easier, but I'm sure it'll wipe up pretty easy. Oh, here we go. So the I can see that the radiator has come loose a bit. There we go. Okay, so the radiator is gonna come out. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool design. I, I do like that it's curved. So they actually stated that airflow fans would work better than static pressure fans uh, in this situation, which is pretty cool. And they were saying that you can also stack the fans, which gives even more airflow. Uh, I think for us, we're just gonna put the uh, regular amount of fans for however many fan slots there are in this case. So that's probably gonna be three when we install the power supply. And I wanna see how well uh, it is optimized for three fans. But we do have to flush this radiator, make sure it's nice and clean. So we'll do that later on. Let's take a closer look at the case. So the case itself is fairly standard. We have the power supply, which will be sitting here. Uh, it's SFX. And then we have an SSD mounting cage, which will be around here. And then this area here, we can actually use it for mounting our pumps and reservoirs uh, right there. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to see any of the system once the radiator's back on unless we, uh, you know, peek through the radiator, but we can have two fans up the top, one down the bottom, and we can double stack them if we wanted even more airflow, but we're just gonna put the three in and see how we go. So far, it's looking pretty cool. There are a few scratches on the inside, but as I did say, it is a prototype. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I think we'll install the GPU first, because it looks to go at the back. Uh, as I said, there are three levels, so you can move the GPU down or up. I'll probably just leave it where it is and install the uh, riser cable which came with the case and it is a Gen 4 riser cable. What I did notice is though, they've got this uh, sound dampening phone on the back panel, which is pretty cool. I think that is because they're trying to go for the most silent uh, small form factor case. So what we'll do is we'll unbox the GPU and we'll get the GPU in first because that is gonna be in the back section. How am I gonna tube this thing up though once I put all the hardware in? That'll be interesting. So what I'm hoping with this card is it's gonna be able to saturate the loop with a lot of heat that we can test out this radiator. Um, now this has 24 gigs of VRAM and it was kindly sent over by ASUS. Uh, big thank you to those guys. And we're gonna be doing a huge project with ASUS as well. Uh, we're just waiting on the motherboard to arrive. So I'm glad that we can finally do a water cooling loop with an RTX 30 series card which is gonna be awesome because it's been so hard getting hands on water blocks and, and GPUs. Uh, oh, this card's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Well, I'd, I suppose that does go hand in hand with how small the PCBs are. Once you take off the, uh, the actual heat sink, then you're only left with a small PCB. So they don't really need such a big water block. This is gonna be perfect for our build anyway. Oh, that looks sick. That looks really nice. This is actually gonna be like, this is, oh, it's only a, a single slot card, wow. 
A 3090 single slot card. This is perfect for ITX builds. Let's peel that off. Oh, that looks so nice. EK water blocks. So hang on, we gotta get the, uh, gotta get this off of the badge. You know, they always make such nice water cooling gear. Always happy to partner up with EK water blocks, ASUS. Premium components. Peel that off. And the back plate has a bit on it as well. So this is the ASUS RTX 3090 EKWB. I'll give you guys a look at the back plate as well. Uh, we're actually not gonna see any of this in the system pretty much because it's gonna be behind the motherboard, but single slot 3090, this is absolutely awesome. Uh, dual eight pins for power as well. This is gonna look really nice and work and perform really nice inside the system. And it's ARGB. Let's go ahead and we'll slot this into the PC build. So I've got the Gen 4 riser cable installed uh, right here. Now, I'm looking at this and the GPU backplate's almost gonna be up against this panel. There will be a tiny bit of room in there, but what I'm thinking is I need to install the back port uh, before we actually put the GPU in. Uh, so I've got two of those bad boys laying around on the floor. So let's go ahead, put some ports on the back. Don't want that GPU leaking after all. And I have kept the GPU height maximum because what I found was the ports actually show up above the motherboard which is going to be very handy once we go to try and uh, tube up this system. Maybe I have to undo this thing fully. Let's try undoing it. So if I take this out And then maybe I install the GPU first and then put that back in and we should be all good. GPU's in its home. The ports should be okay. I think we're just getting clearance over the top. If not, we can just have a 90 degree fitting going up slightly. It's not really gonna matter. And uh, now I think we just install this bracket back in. And that looks like it should work. That's pretty tight. And then we bring this up here. Do that up. So the GPU's in place now. Now what I want to do is I want to put the SFX power supply in. And I'm thinking we're going to use this uh, V850 Gold SFX power supply from Cooler Master. 850 watts is going to be plenty for an RTX 3090 and a high-end system like this. And I don't know of any other SFX power supplies that really go up uh, this far in wattage. So let's go ahead and unbox this and we'll chuck this into the case. So far, a very impressive case. Obviously, um, addressing those concerns from the beginning. Uh, playing around with the case it might actually answer some of my questions. My, my main thing is how are we going to fill this case uh, properly? I think it's going to be very hard to fill the reservoir in that. But the, the good thing is, so the fans I'm going to install last. So I can just have a fan to the side and fill the uh, reservoir from the top and then just do the screws up for the fan and we're all done. Draining the system though is gonna be a different issue, but maybe I could put like a T-join down the bottom on the uh, radiator port. So we'll see what happens there and uh, we'll, we'll definitely figure it out. Okay, so power supply facing down for clean air and we will put that in just above that. So the riser cable is free there and then we'll push that in and that should do it. Let's see if that's what we need. Can that move back a bit more? Why is that? Oh, okay. So there's screws protruding from the bottom. So there's screws in the bottom of the case which are preventing me from actually pushing this power supply all the way back. So I may have to loosen those screws a tiny bit in order to get the power supply in. I 
I would assume that the riser is meant to go here. So, oh, hang on, can I lift that? I can't lift the power supply up anymore because the motherboard tray right here is sitting right on the top of the power supply. And I've got these screws which are sticking up from the bottom, which I believe are for the bottom panel uh, or the case feet or something like that. So I can't actually push the power supply in anymore because there's no room. So I have to loosen this screw or put a shorter screw in at the bottom so that I can get the power supply in. Now, lucky for us, we were provided with a bag of screws because this is only a prototype case. So we were told that if there is any other screws that need changing around, we could do so. Uh, so I'm gonna take the power supply out and I'm gonna change those bottom screws around to try and find a shorter screw so that we can get the power supply in. So that's actually the fan screw. So we, we don't need the fan screws in at all. So it's not a screw that's uh, of structural importance to the case, it's just a fan screw. So I'm gonna take those out because there won't be a fan going in that place, it's just the power supply going in. Power supply face down, get this cable up. Put that in under there. And then slide that in. Perfect. All right, that's all in place. So, let's go ahead and install the screws. So I don't know if the overall finish of the case itself will change. I think just more tightening up, you know, the, the screw tolerances and things like that. Uh, obviously, if you get a brand new case, it's not gonna have scratches or anything all over it. This one does have a few scratches, more on the inside where it's been machined and processed, but for a prototype, it's a pretty good case so far. There's just those couple of questions I have with the water cooling and we will figure that out very soon. All right, now that the power supply is installed, let's go ahead and maybe work on the motherboard. So the motherboard we're gonna be using is the ASUS ROG Strix Z490i Gaming. It's an ITX motherboard, pack full of features, perfect for this system. So I'm gonna pair that with the 10900K CPU, which should add a bit more heat to this loop and also performance. I'm very interested to see what the uh, heat is like, especially in the latest gaming titles. That's such a nice looking motherboard. Let's go ahead and we'll get the uh, the 10900K CPU out. Let's move this aside actually. 10900K, take that out. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll install the CPU. It's pretty easy, you just pull back the latch, pull back this, you don't have to take the cover off yet. All you have to do is line the gold triangles on the CPU. So there's be a gold triangle in the bottom corner. Line that up with the triangle, which is on the motherboard. Now you can also line the latches up on the side. So there we go, it's installed properly. You can give it a tiny wiggle like that. And then we can push this latch down and that'll take off the plastic cover. So for convenience of space in this build, we're actually going to install an M.2 drive. This is not a Gen 4 motherboard, so we're gonna be installing our Seagate Firecuda 510 one terabyte drive. Um, so it's gonna be really nice and compact and clean in the system. And also less cables, so we don't have the SATA cables uh, inside the system either. So let's go ahead and we'll undo this cover right here and we'll get the drive installed. Now the Seagate Firecuda 510 actually has read and write speeds of 3450 by 3450. So it's a really fast drive for a Gen 3 drive. Let's get that. Is this not undone yet? And then we'll undo that. There we go. Motherboard's prepped there. So we'll, um, we'll unbox the drive and then we'll get that installed. So we've got a couple of these laying around for lots of PC builds. I can't remember if I've got games pre-installed in this one though. Hopefully I do, because that'll save a lot of time. So to install the drive, all you have to do is you put it in a, a, a little bit of an angle, right? And then give it a bit of a push, you'll see that it'll click in. There is a little notch there that you have to line up. Then all you have to do is get your screw. If you hold this down, then you can start screwing it in, like so. And there we have it, that's done. 
Now, a lot of people will uh, take the sticker off as well for the thermal pad that is underneath. I'm not gonna bother. These drives actually perform really well when they're hot. They actually perform better when they're hot. So I'm actually gonna leave the sticker on because I also have to use this for future builds. Let's go ahead and we will reinstall this part right here, making sure all of the holes line up. Push that down and screw this in. Put this little plastic part back in. Uh, which way does that go again? That would go this way. So that should click in under there, I believe. Or do I have that the wrong way? Oh no, there we go. So that clicked in. There we go, all installed. So next we're going to install the EK Waterblocks Quantum Magnitude. Uh, this is a really high performance CPU block, one of the best on the market, if not the best. And uh, this would be really good for getting that heat out of the CPU and into the water loop, which is exactly what we want, because we're definitely interested in testing this radiator out. That's the whole point of this video. So let's get this unboxed and we will see if... So the side of this says... 11, no, this should be all right. Let's test this out and see how it goes. Such a nice premium looking block as well. I love these blocks. So it's an ARGB CPU block, full nickel and plexi. Looks really nice. So first things first, we need the rubber part. That is to stop the metal bracket from contacting the PCB. So we'll go ahead and we'll install that on the back side of this motherboard. So you do that by lifting this up, you can line up these screws. This actually goes this way. Put that underneath. And that should all be lined up. So second part, we need our plastic washers, one over each hole. Then we can screw in these screws which screw right into the back metal plate. So all of the screws are installed. Let's go ahead and put a bit of thermal paste on. We don't need too much because the pressure of the CPU block is gonna spread it itself. So let's just put a little pea size blob in the middle. That should be enough. That'll spread nice and evenly under the pressure of this lovely CPU water block. Damn, I love the look of this. So we'll put that on the top there. Then we go ahead and we insert the springs into all four corners. And so when we are screwing this in, you wanna get even pressure. So we're going to be screwing down opposite ends and we're not gonna screw it down all the way uh, on the first run. We get, we're gonna sort of go around gradually making it tighter and tighter, opposite corners. So if we start here, we get that to bite until we feel a tiny bit of pressure and then we'll go across the other side until we find a tiny bit of pressure with it. So I can feel that coming on now. Get a tiny bit of pressure. I can feel that coming on now. And then the opposite end. So I can feel that coming on now. I can still, I could go a bit more with this one now because we're on to the second run around to the opposite side. So that's gonna help evenly spread that paste. And that my friends is how you install the EK Quantum Magnitude water block. So, now we need to get the RAM installed. I'm thinking we'll chuck in some G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM. So we have 32 gigabytes of the G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM. Let's go ahead and unbox this and then we'll get that into the motherboard. Then the motherboard's good to install into the case. Uh, this particular RAM is two 16 gigabyte sticks running at 3200 megahertz. So, yeah, the uh, speeds could be faster, but it is, uh, it's some good quality RAM. So let's get this installed and we'll see, uh, see how it looks. To install RAM, all you have to do is line it up with the notches, slide it down, and then just put a bit of pressure on the top until you hear it click on both sides. So I'll go ahead and do it again. So line it up with the notches like so. 
push it down, tiny bit of pressure on each side until you hear it click. And there we go, that is one good looking motherboard. Okay, motherboard installation time. Just to help me out a bit, I'm gonna have the case laying down flat. Then hopefully, the motherboard should just pop right in. So we'll line those standoff holes up, like so. There we go, that was nice and easy. And then we will get all of these four screws back in. So those go in nice and easy. This one right in the corner there's gonna be a bit annoying to try and reach, but should be okay, we'll manage. So I would have preferred these to be normal, you know, Phillips head screws just for the inside case. I understand that they're trying to keep all of these screws exactly the same. I get that. Uh, just for convenience sake, I think this would have been a bit easier. But it's not too bad. It's just a, a preference thing, really. I prefer to just get the screwdriver out with the magnetized tip on it and um, have no issue screwing in. Last one. That's right in this corner. It's very hard to reach. I hope I don't lose this screw. I just dropped it. Oh, I dropped it. All right, I'll be right back. I'll install this screw off of camera and we'll continue with the build. <laughs> Note to self, motherboard installation first, power supply second. Now it is time to install the EK Quantum Kinetic. So uh, this hopefully is gonna fit nice and snug within this system, give us a really small reservoir and a D5 pump for this system. I don't really have anything else that is gonna fit really nicely in here um, with an integrated pump and reservoir. I have some small tube reservoirs, but I think they're a bit too big. So if we can fit this in there somehow, this is actually going to come in very handy. So uh, this is the EK Quantum Kinetic FLT120, this is with an integrated D5 pump. Let's go ahead and see if we can fit this inside the system. As with a lot of things that are custom, we've actually ran into an issue. So I got this uh, little res pump combo from a mate and unfortunately it didn't have the uh, little standoff things for it. So I had to actually get this one from an FLT reservoir without a pump and it's not as long as the original uh, feet that come off of it. So I can't actually get this installed, but I did come up with an idea to actually install this backwards as you can see now. And it can pretty much just sit on the SD cage like that. And I can either screw that in or double sided tape it down. Now, that was brilliant and all, and we we're about to run with that. But then I went to test fit this radiator and because of the curvature along this edge right here, it actually collides with this. So this is actually unusable in this build. Now, the only other thing that I can really do is run this system without a reservoir. Now, that is perfectly fine once the system is full because the pump's always gonna have liquid in it. So what I was thinking was using this D5 Alpha Cool pump, I mount it like this. So it should have enough clearance around here for the radiator and we can fill it through one of the ports, uh, one of the imports, because it's got two. So if I mount it like this, I can't really use the two front ports for the in and out for the tubes because it is gonna be pretty close to that uh, radiator that we're gonna put back in. So I can only use the top two. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to fill this system with the radiator a bit loose. So I'm thinking maybe I'll do hard tubing on the inside and then I'll soft tube from the port on the uh, side of the case to the radiator itself so I can move it in and out and do what I need to do there. Uh, that's the plan for now. Let's go ahead and install this pump and we'll see how it all goes. Pump is installed, fittings are installed, all of the cables are in. It's time to get this tubing done. Let me first take you around the loop though. So the idea with this loop is we are going to go straight from the pump down, 
connect to this bulkhead fitting, which will connect to the bottom side of the radiator. Let me just turn this case for you guys. So there's a bulkhead fitting right there. That's gonna go down and out and will connect to the radiator on the outside. It'll come out the top of the radiator and through into this bulkhead fitting, which connects with a 90 degree tube onto the import of the GPU. Out of the GPU, we go into the import of the CPU and then from the CPU back to the pump. That's all that we're gonna go for. I'm still, still contemplating on how I'm actually gonna fill this system. Now, one way or another, we're gonna get it done. I just have no idea how I'm going to achieve that. Now, one thing I am thinking of is doing something similar to the last build that we did, my personal build, and that is turning it on its side so that the pump is the highest part of the loop. I'll have the radiator sort of, I don't know, floating around somewhere using soft tubing or something like that, or pre-fill the radiator and then, you know, add that to the loop or something. And uh, hopefully I could just fill it from the top of the uh, pump. So we'll see how we go. It's gonna be a bit of playing around. Uh, an easy way to fill this system would be absolutely fantastic. It's gonna be such a hassle to fill this system if I was to uh, put the radiator on. I have no idea how someone would fill it. Now there are ways, and obviously I would figure that out, but yeah, it's gonna take a bit of playing around. Let's get the tubes installed. Before I go ahead and try and fill this thing, I want to try and get at least the bottom fan in. I don't want to put the top fans in yet, just in case I need to use the top to get a tube in or something to get some of the liquid in. But uh, if I can at least get this bottom fan in, that'll get us going. And then I've got to, I, I honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to fill it properly, but we are going to come up with something and we're going to make it work. So let's get these fans installed and we'll see how it goes. So I have found another little issue with this case. Uh, when installing this bottom fan, the, the, the screw holes are about, I'd say maybe three millimeters too far towards the back panel. Um, now it's probably good for most fans, right? But this particular fan actually has a little step up here uh, to account for the RGB and just aesthetics, right? So. If these screw holes were perhaps, you know, another three millimeters towards the front of the case, then it would fit in perfect. Now, I've managed to get two screws in, but now the fan is sort of like, for, in order for me to get these two screws in, the fan sort of pushed up against the back panel kind of on a bit of an angle like that. Yeah, if that could be fixed, I think that that would, uh, definitely be helpful because I know a lot of people like RGB in their PCs. All right, I figured out how we're gonna do this. The radiator I'm gonna leave sitting right here. We're going to put some soft tubing on the end, make it go through the hole here and then connect to the fitting on the back side. Same with the bottom. This case almost requires you to have the quick disconnect fittings. If we had them, this would be actually a lot easier to do. Uh, you could almost pre-fill the radiator and then join it on and we could fill this loop like normal. But the soft tube method is gonna work. It's just we're going to have two pretty funky looking loops sort of curving around on the outside of the case. Unfortunately, because we don't have the quick disconnects, that's what we have to do. Uh, one thing that I think maybe this company should consider is perhaps if quick disconnects are a bit of a requirement, maybe include two of them just so uh, users don't have this much trouble with the system. Either that or make it very apparent that they do need the quick disconnects for ease of use. Anyway, let's go ahead, let's soft tube these last two parts and then we'll start filling the build. You know, I really had high hopes for this, but like just not including these quick disconnects is just really leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Like. Apart from that, the case has really good potential. Um, 
And you know, maybe it would have been all right if I had some quick disconnects as well, but unfortunately I don't. And I can't imagine that a lot of other people would have them. So that would mean there's gonna be a lot of inconvenience and that's just gonna leave bad taste in customers' mouths. Uh, so anyway, we're trying an unconventional way of filling this build and we've just got these two loop tubes hanging out the back, which doesn't look, like the overall look of it's not gonna be what I wanted. And so to me, because of that inconvenience, it kind of ruins the whole build for me. But let's go ahead and I still, I definitely still wanna test out the thermals because I wanna see if their claims um, of, you know, being this surface area being greater than a 360 millimeter radiator. And also I wanna see the claims of it being the quietest uh, small form factor PC, if they are true or not. So let's go ahead and uh, hopefully this works. So I need to turn the power on down the bottom. There we go, hopefully it starts going. So it's just spinning. Uh, it's cause it's not going to bring it up. So I kinda need to turn the case on its side, I think. Let me try that. So the PC is complete. GPU temperature currently is 25 degrees. We've been running this system for quite a while. We actually stress tested it to heat up the loop and then we let it cool down. GPU at 25 degrees on idle and the CPU seems to be about 26, 27 degrees on idle. So what we are looking for here is to see how high this GPU temperature is gonna rise and see if this radiator can handle it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up the Fermark GPU stress test Let's leave that heat on there for a while. Let's see how hot it gets, where the flat line is, and uh, we'll see what comes of it. So the GPU has stabled out and flatlined at roughly 50 degrees Celsius, and uh, we have not seen it budge there for quite a few minutes. But one thing that I found interesting in this Fermark test is that up the top here, it's saying board power is using 350 watts, but I can see that the the uh, memory up here is not using its full potential. So there's something going on with this Fermark. And one thing that I did notice is, um, because I saw this, I ended up running GPU-Z, and that also is able to uh, take note of you know, the core and the memory clocks and the GPU load. One really strange thing I noticed is, when I minimize this, what? So that GPU clock just jumped way up and you can see on the graph here, it's starting to project that new uh, level that it's at. And I've also noticed that now the temperatures start to rise a tiny bit more as well. Currently, uh, the max has been 53 degrees. Uh, what is it at the moment? Let's take a look. So it's at 53 degrees right now and it'll probably continue to slowly rise up, but it doesn't push past 60 degrees, which is pretty good. So what I might do first is I will stop this test because it seems to have flatlined around 53 degrees. It probably rise a couple more degrees here and there. Uh, it was 50 degrees on Fermark without minimizing it, but as I said, you can see that megahertz jump. It's just crazy just by minimizing the program. So there's something going on with Fermark. So what we'll do now is we'll open up 3D Mark. We'll test out the benchmarks because that's going to give us a more realistic idea of how this GPU is going to be performing in games in terms of temperature. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, how it's going to perform overall, I would think that this GPU is probably going to be below average compared to the other 3090. So I'm not expecting the score to be higher than average, maybe a couple hundred points below, due to the fact that this GPU's clock speeds are a tiny bit lower than, uh, say, your Strix uh, and, and vice versa. So let's go ahead, let's give 3D Mark a run, probably a time spike stream, and we'll see what the results are. These are some pretty incredible results. So we ran 3D Mark Time Spy Benchmark, and this is gonna be more realistic of what you would experience in games. And our max temperature was 44 degrees Celsius on this GPU. And the GPU clock reached 2010 megahertz for the max memory clock at uh, 1200, basically. This is <laughs> incredible. 
350 watts power draw, so we're doing pretty good. And as I said, I did expect our GPU to be just below average because the rated clocks on this actually aren't as big as say your Strixes and things like that. But how about we try overclocking this GPU maybe in the next video when we use it, when we do the big project with ASUS and uh, we'll actually see what we can get. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the score and like the, the temperature of this case is pretty incredible. Um, I'm very surprised that 44 degrees was the max that we saw. So there is definitely some awesome cooling going on there. We've only got three fans in there as well. It's not double stacked. So uh, that makes me a lot happier about this case so far and all of the stress that we went through to get it together. So I just wanted to summarize everything that we learned today about this case and leave you guys with a couple of final thoughts. So overall, I think that this case is a brilliant idea. However, it is lacking in a few spots. And I have written down a couple of those points which I'll read out to you guys now. Um, firstly, the case feet need improvement because the rubber falls off whenever it's moved. Now granted, if you're not used, if you're not like moving the case around, it's fine, but maybe some sort of, you know, adhesive or something in the feet just help them to stick would be good. The bottom fan mounting holes, they need to be moved three millimeters towards the front radiator to account for all fans. Our particular fans have this little lip on the front for aesthetic reasons and RGB reasons, uh, so it didn't fit properly. So if those moved forward, then you're accounting for pretty much every single fan out on the market. The GPU levels needs to be raised one more notch. We actually had to use some offset fittings in there to get it past the motherboard tray. The ports looked like they were going to go past the motherboard tray, but the thickness of the fittings could not fit and you can't actually fit a 90 degree fitting between the motherboard tray and the GPU block. So we had to put those offset fittings in. So one more level up would have been perfect. A radiator hinge door would have been perfect for ease of access. Another thing would be if we could perhaps maybe even include two quick disconnects, maybe two bulkhead fittings, um, you know, have them supplied with the case or at least on the website. Let's just have something in bold, highly recommended to purchase for this case. Just, just something like that. We've got to remember here, the, the customer needs to be satisfied with the product, needs to have ease of use and convenience, and that'll ultimately be a happy customer. One thing that I did just come up with is the SSD tray has 90 degree brackets. Why don't we make the SD tray a removable tray so that if someone's not using an SSD, uh, they don't have the 90 degree bracket there so they can fit a larger reservoir or something inside. I was kind of limited to what I could use because of that 90 degree bracket. Another thing that I just thought of is, honestly, when looking at the front of the case, I'm not a fan of the design, mainly because of the copper radiator. Uh, if there was some way that you could get it black, uh, which would fit in most setup color schemes and look a lot more appealing than a copper radiator, uh, then I think that would go a long way. But, but my main thing to take out of this is if you can get that radiator on a hinge and so that we don't have to have this situation happening here, like just something a lot cleaner, that would be absolutely phenomenal for this case. And also one last thing I'd like to point out is uh, being the quietest uh, small form factor case, it's a it's a very hard thing to determine because that all depends on the type of hardware that you use. For instance, I have a D5 pump in here without any reservoir, so if there is even a tiny bit of air that gets stuck in there, that sound is going to be noticed. Now, it also depends on how fast your fans are running. For instance, these fans right now are on 1500 RPM. I could turn them all the way up and, you know, it would cool the build a lot more. But um, at the end of the day, we're trying to mimic the situation that the company is trying to create, which is a quite performing small form factor case. Now, with all of that constructive feedback out of the way, some positives about the case. This has amazing potential. It is doing its job as intended with every single fan being intake. I've only got three fans on this. You can double stack these fans and get better performance. We saw 44 degrees maximum on an RTX 3090 in our benchmarks. That's exact, that's 
literally what you're gonna see in games, 44 degrees maximum. Now we are in about 23 to 25 degree ambient temperatures. Now in Fermark, that GPU temperature did obviously spike up a lot more, but Fermark is like a worst case scenario. It really stresses the GPU past what you're actually gonna see in any real world scenario. One last thing is the layout of all of the components and the thought that's gone into this really shows. I was quite impressed with all of the mounting options, so a big thumbs up there. And once we get that radiator situation sorted, I think this is gonna be one awesome case. So guys, if you're interested, I'll leave the link to the website in the description. You can sign up to receive their Kickstarter information there or just check out more information for yourself. As always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll leave the parts list down in the description below if you're interested in any of the specs. And if you would like to support the channel, Patreon is a good way to do that or become a YouTube channel member. It is greatly appreciated and helps us out a bunch. One last thing, leave your comments down below. What do you like about this case? What do you not like? And we'll see you all in the next one. Oh,